Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and a bookworm. I'm also a huge fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day I'm going to share one of my favorite deep cuts with you, so let's take a look at today's stories. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365 with MXM Tune. Today, in 1960, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee was first published by J.B. Lippincott. And company. It was an instant classic and went on to win the Pulitzer Prize, one of the highest honors for literary achievement. In 2012, the Fordham Institute conducted a study to see what the most popular reading materials were in 9th and 10th grade English classrooms. It might not surprise you that To Kill a Mockingbird was the most popular text on the list, with 35% of the teachers surveyed assigning it to their students. That's even more than Homer's The Odyssey, the ancient Greek epic that 27% of instructors taught. Even at the time of its release, the height of the American Civil Rights Movement, the book was extremely successful. As a woman born in Alabama in 1936, Lee based the story of To Kill a Mockingbird on her experiences growing up as a young girl in a racially segregated Deep South. It wasn't until 1964, four years after the novel was published, that racial segregation became illegal. The story centers on the experiences of young white children, like Lee herself, who watch as their father Atticus, a lawyer, gets involved in a highly publicized court case in their small town. A black man named Tom is accused of raping a white woman, and even though Atticus can prove that the allegations against Tom are false, Tom is still convicted and dies trying to escape prison. Readers appreciated the book for its commentary on the injustice of racism. As Atticus says in the novel, You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb inside of his skin and walk around in it. It's a good lesson. We should consider what other people's experiences might be and have empathy for them. We should do our best to treat others with dignity, no matter what their background is. Still, for as beloved as Harper Lee's novel is, it's not without flaw. Many readers wisely point out how telling it is that one of the most widely read best-selling books about American racism is written by a white woman. Perhaps at the time, in the 1960s, it was a useful storytelling device for Lee to show us what racism looked like to a young, innocent white girl. How from Scout's perspective, it's so clear that there's wrong and right. But that's also the novel's biggest flaw. It's a book written by a white person for other white people. That's not to say that white people shouldn't write about racism they witness from their own perspectives, but I can't help but wonder how different our world would be if the most widely read book in ninth grade English class showed what racism is like from the perspective of a person of color. Not all readers are going to identify with Scout, a young, naive white girl, or Atticus, a do-gooder who speaks in aphorisms. Atticus ultimately fulfills the perhaps unintentionally racist trope of the white savior, This is when people of color must be rescued by the noble white character. Even when well-intentioned, these tropes can be alienating. Despite its popularity in the classroom, To Kill a Mockingbird is one of the most commonly banned books since it uses racial slurs and has themes about sexual assault. But in September of last year, the book was banned from a school district in Burbank, California for a different reason. The whitewashed perspective on racism was causing harm to black students. One black parent who filed a complaint told Newsweek, quote, there's no counter narrative to this black person dealing with racism and a white person saving them. She also added that by focusing on the 1930s racism in the classroom, it can make students assume that, quote, racism is something in the past. Other parents reported that their black children had been called racial slurs, which fellow students had learned from these books. On the other hand, PEN America, a nonprofit that works towards human rights through literature, argued that books like To Kill a Mockingbird can be used to facilitate discussions about racism. After all, that's what books like To Kill a Mockingbird are written to do. It's an extremely complicated debate, but it does bring up some really valid questions. Why does our education system focus so much on historic racism rather than the racism that's currently occurring in our country? We're living through history right now, 
witnessing as, for the first time, a police officer was convicted of murder for unnecessarily killing a black person on the job. Schools are a great place to facilitate discussions among young people about the Black Lives Matter movement, the impact of systemic racism, and what's going on around them. And literature is a great way to spark those conversations. So why are we reading older books by white people about racism instead of reading books by people of color that reflect our current world? To Kill a Mockingbird has its place in literary history, but maybe it's time that we look forward to amplify the voices of Black writers when we talk about the history of anti-Black racism in the U.S. Now, let's talk about music. And we have a very special guest joining us today on the pod. Hannah Jadagu is here to share about their life on this day in history. Hey y'all, it's Hannah Jadagu, and I'm going to be telling you a little bit about July 11th. So for me, July 11th was the day that I performed at the Bitter End, which is a local venue here at New York, um, in New York City. And I was actually here because I was at a NYU music business summer program. So what happened was I had auditioned and was picked to perform amongst my peers at a show that some of my other peers were putting on. And in this moment at the show, I realized that I definitely loved performing for family, friends, and even people that I didn't know. And now circle back to today, funny story, I go to NYU for the music business program undergrad. So it's a cool full circle moment, and that's why July 11th is special to me. Thanks for listening. And now for our final segment of today's show, I'll be going into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a July 11th in my life. It doesn't look like I did much of anything that was super exciting on any July 11th. It looks like July 11th, 2018, I was um, on my way to my friend's house and we watched the John Mulaney special that probably, I don't know if it had just come out, came out or anything, but I think 2018 was when I first discovered John Mulaney. Um, If you don't know, comedy is something that I actually kind of follow as an individual. I don't know if I often talk about it, but comedians are actually something that I'm more aware of compared to other things and John Mulaney was kind of like one of the first comedians that I watched I was like oh my gosh this guy's really funny and he is really funny and I'm glad he's doing okay and um yeah I don't know I just I find comedy really fascinating I think the the relationship between audience and comedian is a very palpable and ever-changing thing depending on the person and what they're what they're doing on stage so I don't know Highly recommend you you watch some comedy specials. It's pretty interesting because they serve as these really interesting narratives about somebody's life, about commenting about things like racism, like we're talking about today on today's episode, um, and more. It's it's really interesting, and I find comedy to be a very interesting way that information is delivered to people who are listening. Thanks for going back in time with me, and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. You can come back tomorrow for more stories from the past. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365.